Right, hello everyone. Um, so the Heart UK's annual conference, Abstract Submission Deadline, will soon be here. Abstracts are a great way to be included in the main conference programme and it will give you a, a platform to gain va valuable speaking and discussion experience and add to your own portfolio of published work. Submitting conference abstracts can be a little daunting at times. You may be new at submitting work, so we wanted to help and created this mini tutorial to help you create and submit your abstract. So who is the conference for? Join Heart UK, the cholesterol charity, at their annual conference in July to hear the latest thinking and best practice in lipid management and treatments. This is the leading conference for medical, scientific, healthcare and student attendees with an interest in lipids, atherosclerosis, cholesterol conditions, cardiovascular disease and nutrition, and for those involved in primary and secondary care or industry. The conference blends a range of audience groups from consultants, specialist registrars, chemical pathologists, clinical lipidologists, geneticists, GPs with a special interest in cardiovascular disease, scientists and researchers in cardiovascular diseases, specialist FH nurses, dietitians, nutritionists, ancillary health professionals, caring professionals, and any other health professional with an interest in lipids. So why should you submit your work? Become part of the conference programme and select to showcase your work either as an oral or as a poster, which is either judged or unjudged in these categories. So, um, so why submit your work? Well, the conference offers a great opportunity to discuss your work with your peers and colleagues nationwide. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to enhance your CV and the abstract it itself will be published in the online supplement on Else Elsevier's Atherosclerosis Plus website. Our top tip is if you're nervous about presenting, poster submission is a great way to present in a more informal setting. Posters allow you to create strong visual components that may be more appropriate for your topic. So the content of the abstract. An abstract describes the topic you would like to present at the conference, highlighting your argument, evidence and contribution to the work. It's usually restricted to around 250 words. An abstract can be presented at a conference as either an oral presentation which is 10 minutes for the main presentation with five minutes for discussion or as a poster. And we will discuss the best practice for both options. As a top tip, remember that an abstract is a summary of the work and not the full article. So the content, where to begin? Well, consider cases from your work, but always seek permission from patients um, before presenting data and then conceive your ideas. It's important to think about your audience. Are you targeting a scientific audience primarily, or are you looking to present to your peers in healthcare delivery? So with the content, there are a few do's and don'ts. Do read and adhere to the submission instructions and make sure that you keep to the word limit. Try to limit your graphs and images. Remember, you can always include these in your oral or poster presentation. So what sections should you have in the abstract? Conference abstracts have a defined structure that is similar to abstracts for scientific audience, scientific articles. This will typically have an introduction, an objective, methods, results and conclusions. However, Conference abstracts are not presented as part of a full article and therefore must only contain the necessary and most relevant data. So if we start with the title, one of our top tips is to keep it short, but also try and keep it catchy. Keep your title relevant to the content. For inspiration on previously published abstract titles, you can go to www.heartuk.org.uk forward slash conference and search the website page under the abstracts tab. It's important to consider the author listings and affiliations. 
you should include all individuals involved in the abstract you are submitting. Make sure your department lead and co-authors have given agreement before you submit the work and show your abstract to your co-authors for comment and sign off before you submit. It's really, really important that any patient data is anonymised. The introduction and the aims. It's really important to keep it succinct. Keep it relevant to the content. Here you should provide a, br a brief overview of what is already known on the subject. This is arguably the most important section of the abstract. If the aims are not clear, it's harder to establish whether methods are appropriate and if your results are successful in meeting your aims. There are important things to consider in the methodology. Make sure you keep to the point. Concisely describe the design of the study. For example, is it an observational cohort study or is it a clinical audit or quality improvement study? Or is it a randomized controlled clinical trial, etc.? Describe the study population and the sample size. It's important to define the primary and secondary outpoint, um, outpoints or endpoints or outcomes that you assessed and the duration of follow up. And it's also important to think carefully about the level of detail you include. For example, it may not be necessary to give specific details of the cholesterol assay you've used if it hasn't got any relevance to the conclusion that the reader will draw. OK, so the results section. So here you will want to describe your key findings and if applicable, the primary and sec secondary endpoints. It may also be uh, applicable to include some statistical um, uh, parameters as well. So the statistical significance of your findings and that may include confidence intervals, standard deviations or p-values. As a top tip, you don't want to include any interpretation of your results in this section. That will come later. And also, it's important to keep graphs and tables to a minimum, as the, the most applicable um, time for this will be the visual post presentation if the abstract itself is accepted. The next section is the conclusion and the clinical implications. It's really important to be joined up here and make sure that the conclusion you state matches the aim of what you set out to do and also matches the title um, of your of your abstract. It's important to provide a succinct conclusion which summarizes your main findings and it's important to think about what the clinical impact of your work is. Also think about whether it will have implications on clinical practice and if so describe these. Do not worry if your findings are negative or contrary to your original hypothesis or if it will not change clinical practice. Some of the best studies are negative and may in fact conclude that further research is needed on the topic. But before you hit submit, is your abstract relevant to the content of your work? Make sure you've adhered to the submission instructions. Take time to reread your abstract and check for spelling or grammatical errors. Don't ramble. And if possible, get one of your senior colleagues to critique your abstract. Are you within the word count? Get your co-authors to agree to the content and submission also. How will your abstracts be scored and assessed? Well, scoring of your abstracts will be blind marking by members of Heart UK's Medical, Scientific and Research Committee, so they won't see your name when they assess your abstract. The scoring committee will be looking for well thought out, clear and concise descriptions of work. Finally, the submission deadline is mid-March and the outcome notification is mid-April. Finally, see all of your hard work rewarded. Certificates with monetary prizes will be awarded at the Conference for the Best Medical and Scientific Primary and Healthcare Oral Presentations, plus winner, runner-up and people's choice for, po for posters. These will be presented to the worthy winners on the final day as part of the conference close.
We look forward to receiving your submission and to including you in the main conference program for this year's conference. OK, and uh, so yeah, so stay tuned. There will be a part two uh, which will follow after the abstract submission deadline, and this will include top tips on how to prepare your slides and or poster for presentation. So good luck and uh, thank you for listening.